if you are watching right now, we are trying to confirm that we're actually live. So feel to feel free to make fun of me in the comments while we get our act together here. Does it look like we're live yet? Yes. Yes. All right, we're live. Hey, this is Jacob from ABC Window Supply, and uh, thank you for joining us today in our first ever live uh, YouTube video. If you were tuned in yesterday, um, you saw that we did a live Facebook video as well. Um, we have uh, upgraded the lighting slightly today, so uh, you can see me even better. Uh, I'll let you decide if that's a good thing or not. And then um, we're planning to sort of follow up with some of the same topics we were talking about yesterday. So we are starting a series about online digital marketing. Um, we're trying to create resources that will be helpful to you and your company, covering sort of foundational 101 type of topics. Uh, you know, how to set up your website well, um, how to do your marketing well, how to make it so it doesn't take up too much of your time, uh, those sorts of things. Um, so. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and try to address as many as we can right now. Uh, and then even after this video is done being live, uh, we, we still feel free to drop any comments down below. Uh, and that is just inspiration for us for uh, future content, future blog posts, future videos. Uh, and in case you did um, check in with us yesterday on Facebook, uh, even though we're still talking digital marketing, we are covering a few new topics. Uh, so, so this isn't just duplicate, so, so please stay with us here. Cool. All right, so number one, I wanted to talk a little bit about key business objectives and making sure that your marketing efforts are aligning with those. Um, this is uh, something that um, like I personally and ABC have made plenty of mistakes in, and I see uh, lots of our customers and just companies in general um, don't don't always do this the best, um, but it's super important. So you want to make sure that you have um, key business objectives set in your mind. So uh, for a window cleaner, that probably means increasing revenue, increasing average uh, amount of money that comes in uh, per job, increasing the number of times you service your clients per year, decreasing customer churn, those sorts of things. So those are your overall uh, business objectives and you need to make sure the other things that you're doing, uh, some of the, the efforts you're doing in marketing and other areas of your company, they need to align with your key business objectives and support them. Uh, so where this comes down in your marketing is it's easy to start doing uh, marketing tactics that uh, don't really have anything to do with your key business objectives. So it's easy to get confused and, um, and start to think you're in the business of getting Facebook likes or YouTube views uh, or whatever the case might be. So uh, social media can easily suck you in to a lot of things that uh, essentially don't matter for your business. So anytime you're deciding a new marketing tactic, a new marketing effort that you're going to try out, you should be able to answer the question of how does this support my key business objectives. It doesn't necessarily have to have a direct correlation um, where you say like everything I do must immediately translate to another dollar that the company made, uh, but at least indirectly you need to be able to explain. So if you're putting a lot of effort into uh, social media, you're doing lots of Facebook, for example, you need to be able to say, yeah, I." I'm doing this to increase um, you know, the number of people that like my company and engage with my posts so that those customers will turn into uh, actual paying customers that uh, are going to get window cleaning services from me. Otherwise, um, you know, you're just uh, spending time uh, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever uh, that you could spend more profitably in other areas of your company. because. None of us are in the business of getting Facebook likes. That's just not something that turns into revenue. Uh, so whatever you're doing, um, you should make sure that it somehow aligns with and uh, supports your key business objectives. Um, where, 
one potential area that I see this a lot with window cleaners uh, in particular is um, like with running a blog. So a lot of window cleaning companies have blogs, uh, which uh, I'm not saying is a, a good or a bad thing. Um, but the question is, you know, why do you have a blog and does it somehow support one of your key business objectives? So a lot of times the, the idea with a blog is that you are getting better SEO, search engine optimization value, which means more traffic to your site, which means more people will convert into paying customers. Um, so if that's the case uh, and your blog is doing that, great. But if, uh, if the blog is just um, something you do because your competitors are doing it, or just because you feel like you should be doing it, or you read an article somewhere that said, you know, blogging's the next big thing. Um, not to say any of that is necessarily wrong, but every company is unique, every situation is unique. You really need to be able to say, is this actually have anything to do with uh, the objectives of my company? All right, so. Um, the uh, next thing I wanted to delve into for a minute, um, kind of in line with that, is analytics. So um, in the last video, in our last blog post, we talked a lot about Google Analytics. Um, and uh, so this, this particular topic is more of a cautionary tale. Um, if you are looking at like Facebook Analytics, or you're looking at Google Analytics, or the built-in analytics for WordPress, or Squarespace, or whatever you're using, um, there is a ton of data there. It's uh, unbelievable. It is I've certainly found myself going through all of our Google Analytics data, and it's just this like incredible, incredible rabbit hole. So before you know it, you're looking at um, you know I've got customers or visitors to my site coming from all of these different countries. How did they get there? What was their screen resolution? What device were they using? Um, you can just find all of this information. It's unbelievable. Um, what you want to make sure is that the information that you're looking at um, is actually valuable to you. So you should be asking yourself, is the, the data that I'm pulling up, um, it, would I change anything about what I'm doing? Would I change anything about my company as a result of looking at this data? So if I'm looking at the like percentage of people who come to my website from Africa and whether they're using Android or iOS, um, you know, that really doesn't matter to my business. Whether it's 90% iOS or 80% iOS, uh, I'm not going to change anything about what I'm doing because of that. So essentially, looking at that is kind of a waste of my time. And so I can easily get sucked into spending hours looking at all of this stuff that really has no impact on, um, on what I'm doing, any of my key business objectives, anything like that. So uh, to help keep yourself from uh, getting sucked into that rabbit hole, which I have many times, uh, just ask yourself, uh, is this stat, is this analytic that I'm looking at? Uh, and would I change anything because of this? Uh, if the answer is no, you probably don't need to be looking at that or certainly not looking at it very often. Um, Another thing you can do, uh, which I mentioned yesterday a little bit about automation, is if there's some reports that you do find valuable and you look at a lot, so some of the very top line stuff like number of visitors coming to my site, how many of them are converting into you know quote requests or paying customers, uh, some of that most important stuff that actually makes a big difference, um, you can automate those to, like in Google Analytics for example, to automatically email you uh, those reports periodically. So you could say, I want that report every week or every month or whatever. Uh, and so then you don't have to log in and dig through all these piles of data to find what you want. Um, you can just uh, automate it and make your life faster and easier, uh, which is always a good thing. So um, all of this is basically a cautionary tale and not getting sucked into the rabbit hole of social media or analytics and wasting time on things that actually don't matter for your company. All right, so let's see. Next topic that we've got going. Next up, 
Uh, I wanted to briefly touch on a few um, mistakes is a strong word, but a few uh, missteps people make uh, when setting up their website. Uh, a few very basic common things, um, and if you just get them right from the beginning, uh, or even now, if uh, you know you correct it moving forward, you can save yourself a lot of heartache. Um, so number one, um, and sadly I've seen this uh, go awry uh, a couple times, um, but number one is you should be the person who owns the domain and the hosting and the logins uh, for all of your website stuff. So like your domain could be you know like uh, your cool window cleaning company dot com. Uh, what some people have done is worked with a developing or a marketing company who has helped them set those things up uh, and without realizing it uh, they've allowed that company to buy the domain and buy the hosting and whatnot on their behalf. Um, the problem with that is if that company goes out of business or you have some sort of dispute and you want to move away from them or um, you know if if they have some sort of bad intentions, hopefully they don't, but um, if any of that sort of stuff happens, they're the one who owns the logins uh, to your domain um, and you don't have access to them. So they could take it away, they could take your website down, um, either maliciously or just by not doing a good job or whatever the case might be, um, and there won't be much that you can do about it. So whenever you're getting started, uh, you absolutely need to own all this stuff. Don't let any marketing company, any development company, tell you it's best for them to do it for you. That is, um, they they don't have your best um, best. Uh, they're they're not looking out for you when they're doing that. They're looking out for themselves and trying to lock you in, or they just maybe don't know what they're doing. But whatever the case is, it's incredibly critical that you own all of this stuff. Um, so, uh, so always keep that in mind, and then you can always grant other people access to these things. Uh, you know, so like if you have uh, a WordPress website, for example, you can create additional users that they can log into, and they can do the work that they need to do. Uh, but you're still the one in control. Nobody can take your website away from you. Um, and then uh, a little less critically, but um, it just kind of boils down to a waste of money is a lot of people, um, you know, if you're not super techy, you know, you want to go out and clean windows and you don't want to spend all your time thinking about your website, uh, which makes perfect sense, um, is a lot of people, uh, you know, end up buying some things that they don't really need when they're first getting set up. Uh, so, like, if you're using GoDaddy, you're buying your domain name, and you're buying your hosting, during checkout, they've got a million upsells for you. Like, of course, you want super duper Google listing and you need domain privacy and you need, um, you know, they've got like a million add-on services and before you know it, you've added another 20, 30 bucks, maybe even more a month um, in their add-on services that really don't do much. Um, they're all things you can easily do yourself for free. Uh, so in almost every case, uh, you just want to say no thank you to every add-on that they, they're trying to offer you. Similarly, uh, as soon as you you know start up your website, all these companies reach out to you and they say, "Hey, we'll help you set up um, your Google, you know, page and make sure it's uh, optimized and all of that. And then we'll we'll run monthly checks to make sure everything's going good. And we only charge you know fifty dollars a month for that. Um, in most cases, they again are just trying to get you set up on a plan that is." Um, you know, they, they just want to get you set up for life, paying 50 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month or whatever for things that you easily can do yourself. Um, and, you know, a lot of times they're just setting it and then uh, forgetting about it themselves, so there isn't really much ongoing value there. Uh, and that's not to say there aren't some great companies out there that do a lot for your company, um, but you should vet them and make sure uh, that you're actually getting something that's valuable to you. Um, and just avoid, um, you know, buying a bunch of stuff that you don't need. One uh, one good way to know if you should sign up for like a SEO service or a marketing company is 
if they you know reach out to you via spam email that's sort of a ironic way for an SEO company to get a hold of you um, that's probably not something you need uh, the better way is for you to decide that you want some sort of marketing web whatever service and then reach out to you know multiple companies and talk with them and, and see who you like the best and who you think you would work with the best and would provide the most value to you um, so uh, that is uh, that's uh, kind of the end of that point so uh, you know hang on to your money uh, you're in business your money's valuable uh, don't waste it on things that you don't need um, so those are a couple of the topics um, let's see if we got anything else do we have any comments or any questions that I didn't cover already nope Okay, so uh, that's the main stuff that I wanted to cover for right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this video is still going to be live after we finish this, so feel free to keep leaving comments in the future. Uh, we really want to provide you uh, valuable content that can help you with your business. So any questions you have at all or any comments that you have about this video, uh, please feel free to leave them below. Uh, and again, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we 